Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for that beautiful rendition from the chorista. We pray that God will keep them and give them pleasant surprises in Jesus' name. Amen. Kindly let us pray. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war, hallelujah, his mercies endure forever and ever. Oh, praise his holy name. Hallelujah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war. Hallelujah, his mercies endure forever and ever. Oh, pray. Sis holy name. Our Lord and our God, we praise you. We bless your name. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the beginning. You are the ending. You are the everlasting Father. You are the Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi. You are the Shaddai God. Thank you for your mercy. Mercy over us. Mercy of our family, mercy of our church and our nation. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for yet another opportunity you are giving to us to be here at this free clinic today. Thank you for that which you have done in the past. Thank you for what you are about to do now. Thank you for that which you continue to do in our lives. May your name be exalted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Tonight we come before you, Lord Almighty, that which we cannot change in our life, please change them in Jesus' name. Amen. That which we cannot do for ourselves, please do it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Your son, our daddy, you have been using for us. Equip me in Jesus' name. Amen. Preserve him in Jesus' name. Amen. Continually let him be well with him and the family in the name of Jesus. Amen. In today's cl faith clinic, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. And bless every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God Almighty for yet another opportunity of this faith clinic and we thank our father and the lord generally and specially for the privilege you are giving us to be watching this telecast today and under those uh, media god will keep him for us in jesus name amen tonight we're going to talk about something that's the topic that says do something about your situation. We take our text from 2 Kings chapter 7. We read verse three, uh, two verses, 3 and 4. 2 Kings chapter 7, beginning from verse 3. And there were four leprous men at the entry in of the gate, and they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. If we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, and let us fall unto the host of the Syria. If they kill us, we shall but die. These are three lepers who people have written off. And in their own situation, they were also hopeless. But one day like today, they decided to do something about their situation. And they became instruments that God used to save a whole nation. If you are ready to do something about your situation, God is always ready to do something about that situation. Because we are always being told 
that nothing moves without a mover. Also, nothing changes without a changer. Every unpleasant thing that happened in life, something did it, someone did it, circumstances brought it, and before it can be changed for better, you and I need to do something. How you react early to challenges in your life will show how early the testimony will come. In Genesis chapter 12, when you begin to read from verse 1 to 5, Genesis 12, 1 to 5, you hear the story of Abraham. He was told to leave his father and mother, to leave his city, to leave his country, to a destination he did not know. He did not only say yes, sir, to God. He took action. He left as God instructed him to leave. And at the end of the day, God made a generational covenant with him. Not only that, God identified with his name. We can now say God of uh, Abraham. James chapter 2.26, James 2.26 tells us, For as the body without spirit is dead, so faith without work is dead also. There are so many children of God today. They want God to prepare the food, set it at the table, and again take a spoon and begin to feed them. It doesn't work like that. You have a part to play. We must have our self-question. Why do men fail to do something about their situation? Number one, fear. Fear is the one of the reasons why people fail to do something about their situation. Fear of failure, fear of what people will say. If you are fearing that you will fail, you don't make a trial. What of if you try and you succeed? Fear is one of the greatest enemies of change. In 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 to 4, 1 Kings 19, 1 to 4, Elijah, Elijah was running. Elijah was running from Jezebel. And uh, as he was running, there was a servant who was following him. When they got to a, a stage, he said that servant should sit, wait here. Because he was afraid before, he waited. He did not even ask, why must I wait here? I don't I have to go with you. And Elijah left him and went away. But when it comes to the case of Elijah and Elisha, when they even got to the base of Jordan, where he knew that when they passed, there is no way he could come back. Because he has faith and boldness. The master said, wait here. He said, no, I will still go with you. What the other servant lost, Elisha gave. Why are you afraid to do something about your situation? It is time to make a change. Another thing why people fail to do some doubt. In Acts of Apostles chapter 10, 9 to 20, Act 10, 9 to 20, when God needed someone to spread the gospel to the Gentile nations, he called unto Peter. He showed you a revelation. And if you read Act 10, 17, Acts 10, 17, Peter doubted. And because he doubted, even when God established by sign, baptizing the Gentiles with the Holy Spirit, he still went back and concentrated on the Jews. What he doubted became the gain of Paul, according to Acts chapter 26, 17 to 19. Acts 26, 17 to 19. So Paul now became the apostle of the Gentiles. Why? Because somebody doubted and, re and refused to do something about it. Another thing that made people not to do something about their situation is past experience. Maybe they have tried and failed before, or maybe somebody close to them has failed before, or they are using the experience of others to measure what will happen unto them. In Matthew 25, 14 to 28, Matthew 25, 14 to 28, you remember the story of the talent, the one that was given only one talent. 
He refused to do something about it. He said because he knew his master. He was basing his past, his, uh, his action on past experience. Thing doesn't remain statistic. Man can change, situation can change. So you don't use past experience to judge what you have to do. After all, man does not live in the past. We have to live in the present and hope for the future. Number four, because of pride. Sometimes people fail to do something about their situation because of pride. Someone who is jobless, couldn't pay his rent, couldn't feed himself, got a little job somewhere, and he was encouraged to go there and say, you are belittling me. I cannot take that uh, kind of a job. A woman that had been looking for a husband for years, and somebody came and said, you're underrating my standard. I cannot marry that one. He didn't know that the one he wrote off today may become somebody great tomorrow. In 2 King chapter 5, 11 to 12, 2 King chapter 5, 11 to 12, because of pride, Naaman almost lost his miracle. When he said, I, I told the servant of God we just come and lay hand on me and do something spectacular and I will receive my healing. He didn't want to obey. And when they asked him to wash in Jordan, he said, ah, what kind of thing you are talking? I have a better river in my country. Why couldn't I go there and wash? Thank God for God's intervention. Eventually, he obeyed and God answer him. God will answer you today in Jesus' name. Amen. There are so many things, hindrances we put on our way. Even sometimes foolishness who made us not to do something about our situation. We're going to pray right now and say, Father, Father. please bring a permanent change to what I cannot change in my situation in Jesus' name. Bring a permanent change to what I cannot change in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say, Father, please empower me to take a step for positive turnaround in my life. Father, please empower me to take a step for positive turnaround in my life. In the name of Jesus, empower me to take a step for positive turnaround in my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, let today usher in a new beginning of greater glory in my life. In the name of Jesus. Let today usher in a new beginning of a greater glory in my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. I want to assure you, brethren, if you do your part, God will do his part. Amen. Every situation that may be confronting you, God will always make a provision for you to escape when you do something. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians 10, 13. He said, There have no temptation taken you, but as such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able? But we, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Whatever you are passing through, you will escape in Jesus' name. Amen. The woman with issue of blood did something about her situation. In Mark chapter 5, 25 to 29, Mark 5, 25 to 29, she did not just sit down and be lamenting and be complaining. I've gone to many physicians. I spent all my money. There was no result. Why should I continue to try? She did something about, situation, about her situation. She made up her mind. If I just tore the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And she took step. She went despite the crowd that were around the Lord Jesus Christ. She found her way and tore the hem of his garment. And that was the end of her problem. She did something. God will terminate every problem in your life today in Jesus' name. Amen. What of blind Bartimaeus? He did something about his blindness. 
He couldn't see, but he had here to hear. He had the step of people. And he asked, what was happening? They said Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. He did not keep quiet. He had mouth to talk. He used it. He shouted, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And immediately they called him. Even his garments wanted to be an obstacle. He threw it off. Because he did something about his situation, the situation did not remain the same. He got his sight back. As you do something about your situation today, and as we cry to God, God will answer us in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, Father open, my open my eyes to what I have to do and grace to do them in Jesus' name. Father, open my eyes for that which I have to do about my situation and give me grace to do them in Jesus' name. Open my eyes, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, Father, please reverse every irreversible in my life today. In the name of Jesus. Reverse every irreversible in my life in my situation, in my head, in my marriage, in my ministry, in my destiny. Every reversible, Father, reverse them in Jesus' name. Amen. You remember the man of Pansy who was bedridden? He didn't tell us how many years, but he had a good friend, about four of them. They took steps concerning their friend's situation. They got a bed, placed him there. They carried him to where Jesus was. That's very great. But when they got there, there was an obstacle. The crowd had filled all the rooms. And they looked what to do. The Bible said they broke the roof of the house and let their friend down on the spot where Jesus was standing and teaching. Jesus saw their faith and immediately he pronounced healing. He said, I sin be forgiven you. And the man became well. There was another man called Jabez. He did something about his situation. He was born into a sorrowful situation, what we call generational problem today. And he discovered that both his past and pre present people, they have been living in sorrow. And he decided to do something about his own situation. The fact that your father is born poor doesn't mean you have to die poor. The fact that nobody is educated in your family doesn't mean you will die in ignorance. You just have to do something about your situation. He did something about his situation. He cried to God in prayer, as we are going to cry to God in prayer now. And God changed his situation. By now, if you read your Bible, God changed his situation so much there was a city called the city of Jabez. He will change your situation today in Jesus' name. Amen. Going to say, Father, Father arise, arise and break every generational curse in my life, in family, in Jesus' name. Arise and break every generational curse in my life and family, in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, destroy every wall of Jericho. Standing against my destiny in the name of Jesus. Father, destroy every one of Jericho. Standing against my destiny in the name of Jesus. Amen. The wife of the sons of the prophet did something about her situation. About her financial situation. In 2 Kings chapter 4, 1 to 7. The Bible didn't say she was the one who borrowed. As far as the Bible is concerned, the husband was faithful, faithfully serving God, but didn't do anything about her, situa her financial situation. So she left indebtedness to the wife. The wife also was living in that situation for some time until a creditor came. If you cannot pay her money, we take your two sons. 
And now he has reached the end of the war. She did something about her situation. She straight away went to the prophet, Elisha, and complained, this is my situation. You two have been covering your problem. You have people who can help you. Why can't you open up to them? Is it because of pride? Is it because of sheer fear or what? Open up and God will, will intervene. So he opened, she opened up. And Elijah, Elijah said, what do you have? You know all the story. She went and locked the door, began to pour the oil. And when the, all the vessel was fully filled, she went back to the prophet. He said, go and say, pay your debt and begin to live in abundance. Don't forget she borrowed vessel. In that business, there's an idea that you don't have. Why don't you ask from others who have that idea? There are some technical know-how you don't know about in that business. Why don't you consult those who knew, know about it? Why must you keep to yourself? The woman did something, and there was positive financial breakthrough. But financial turned around in her life. You too need to do something, and as you do it, you will get out of that debt in Jesus' name. Amen. And your business will become buoyant again in Jesus' Amen. name. So we're going to pray and say, Father, Father, please open the door of my breakthrough today. In the name of Jesus, please open the door of my breakthrough today. The door of my financial breakthrough, let it be open today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, oh Lord. Bring an end to every attack against my family in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, bring an end to every attack against my family in the name of Jesus. Bring an end to every attack against my family in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say, Father, please speak your peace to my head and my marriage in Jesus' name. Father, please speak your peace to my head and marriage in the name of Jesus. Speak your peace to my head and marriage in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, what do we need to do? We need to take step of faith. In Matthew 99, Matthew 9, 29, when Jesus saw their faith, their faith, he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. No one can believe for you. You have to believe for yourself. It is not just enough to say, I believe. You must back your belief, your faith, with action. James 2, 20, James 2, 20 said that faith without work is dead. The woman with Israel blood, Believe, but she added action to her belief. She took action. Number two, take a step of prayer. When Herod arrested James, what happened? The church did nothing, and he was killed. But when he arrested uh, Peter, ah, he, the second person, those we depended on, they started praying. The Bible said the church prayed. A miracle happened. Peter was delivered from the hand of death. You will be delivered from death in Jesus' name. Amen. The best pray is situation change. Anna pray is a situation change. As you pray tonight, as you do something about your situation, that situation will change for better in Jesus' name. Amen. And you must obey God absolutely. God showed Moses the tree when they go to the river of Mara. And the, 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 river, the water was bitter. And they had no water to drink in the desert. And God opened the eyes of Moses. He, saw, he gave him direction about a tree. But God didn't go to the tree by himself. God didn't cut the tree by himself. It was that, I mean, Moses that cut the tree and now soak it in the water before change came. There are some steps you ought to take. Like uh, one of my, my, my sons, he said, this COVID-19, they have locked everywhere. He will wait until the, oh, the thing was open before he started writing application. I say, who tells you that? 
that you cannot be different. I say, write to anywhere. You can write online, write everywhere. And within a few weeks that he started, he got employed. What I have said until the lockdown is over. He will just still be idle. So why must you take God for granted? The responsibility of prayer, the responsibility of fasting, the responsibility of holy living, the responsibility of payment of your tithe and offering cannot be left for God. You must do it by yourself. And your situation will change for better. The one who changed the water of Mara will change every bitterness in your life to sweetness in Jesus' name. Amen. You must also take a step of sacrifice. Abraham gave a sacrifice of his only son. And God entered into an everlasting covenant with him. Not only that, Solomon also sacrificed a thousand burnt offering. And God gave him a blank check. God is waiting for you. He's waiting for your sacrifice of love, your sacrifice of commitment and dedication. And once you have done that, situation will change for better in Jesus' name. Amen. And don't remember, I mean, don't forget to pay your vow unto God. Jephthah made the vow, and God gave him victory over his enemy. Some people are making pledges upon pledges. They will write big amount, they won't pay. Why don't you write the little you can pay? And commit yourself to paying that, and God will use it to bless you. There are a lot of pledges are outstanding now. Uh, they are just piling up. And people take it for granted. Let that change today. And then be, learn how the culture of appreciation. To give appreciation to what God has done and to thank him in advance for that which he has to do. By so doing, we will be open. Paul and Silas, they were in prison. They were chained. They were not a criminal. But yet they were changed for the work of God. Instead of complaining, instead of more money, instead of knocking God, say, God, what we are working for you, why can't you deliver us? They changed from prayer to praises. And at the midnight, there was an earthquake. And the foundation of the prison began to, began to shake. God will shake the foundation of your trouble today in Jesus' name. Amen. And you will come out in Jesus' name. Amen. So they came out of the prison. Whatever I put you in prison, whether financial prison, spiritual prison, physical prison, marital prison, the one who opened the prison for Paul and Silas, we open that prison door today in Jesus' name. Amen. As I conclude, what to fail to do something about we eventually do something about you. The sin you don't do something about, we eventually do something about you. If you don't believe me, ask something. The sin did not do something about, later plug his ass out. And it became someone they were mocking because he failed to do something about it. Whatever situation you may be right now, you can still do something that will manifest the power of God in that situation. But if you are not yet born again, there is no amount of prayer you can pray that God will change that situation. For situation to change in your own case, you must do something about that sins in your life, that weakness in your life. You know you are not walking straight with God. You must decide to be committed to him today. Therefore, if you just confess your sin and accept Lord Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive your sin and he will begin to do something about your situation. Because Proverbs 15 it says, Proverbs 15, it says, the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. So if you are ready to do something about your sin today, you want to become a friend of Jesus, you want to begin to serve him, bow your head down so that we can pray together. Father, I thank you for those who are ready for saying bye-bye to the world of sin and giving their life to you, that they want you to do something about their situation. Father, Please have mercy on them in Jesus' name. Amen. Forgive their sin in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive them to yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. And every oppressive situation of their life, 
Let it receive positive change now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And together we shall make heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. We just want to pray one prayer and then we give our offering. Say, Father, Father beginning from today, beginning let from me today. sing a new song in the name of Jesus. Father. Beginning from now, let me sing a new song in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Father, please let my situation not be an impossibility in the name of Jesus. Don't let my situation be an impossibility. Do something today in the name of Jesus and change my situation for better. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. And so, Father, we come before you today. We lift our eyes before you at the maiden look unto their mothers. You are the helper of the helpless. There is nowhere we can run to. Every situation that we cannot change by ourselves, that have been holding us into ransom, that have been stagnating our life, we speak your word to them today. Let there be a positive change in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever is standing between us and our destiny, we ask it to be removed by fire in the name of Amen. Jesus. Every generational problem, every generational causes, every generational sickness and disease that have been holding us down, by your word today, remove them in Jesus' name. Amen. Go to their foundation and root them up in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we continue to act by faith and pray in your name, let miracle beget miracle in Jesus' Amen. name. And move us higher than our dream in Jesus' Amen. name. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Amen. Now we want to give our offering. Please package your offering and lift it up before God. One of the ways your financial situation could change is by giving your offering. Father, as we lift this offering up to you now, use it to open door of abundance to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Door of prosperity in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, as many as are given to you today, don't let them lack any good thing in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, gracious Father. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.